I've just quit my 120k a year job. From next month, I'll only be making $332 MRR in passive income. Why did I do it? To free up my time so I can focus on growing my passive income sources while traveling the world as a digital nomad. In this video, we'll cover the financial foundations that allowed me to pursue that lifestyle while reducing the risks of me going broke. If you want to ditch your 9 to 5 and travel the world too, at least for a while, and work on your own thing, keep watching and find out the exact steps you'll need to take to ensure you have a healthy bank account. Hey friend, if you're new here, my name is Olivier, ex-engineer turned product manager. I'm currently documenting the steps I'm taking to create my online business with as much transparency as possible as I quit my 9 to 5 to become a digital nomad. So if you're interested in getting your finances in order, starting your own online business and ditching that 9 to 5, be sure to subscribe for new videos every Friday. All right, let's dive in. First thing to ensure you have a healthy bank account before ditching that 9 to 5. Play the hand you were dealt. Embrace your current situation, but maximize your salary. If you've gone to college, find and get the highest paying job for your current skill level and experience for what you've studied. A study in 2014 found that employees who stayed in companies for longer than two years get paid 50% less over their lifetime. This means that you could try to maximize your salary by changing company every two years to get a 10% or more raise on your salary instead of the 3% you would usually get by staying at the same company. Of course, keep job satisfaction, career growth, and work-life balance in mind as you decide to change company. Always protect your downside. Create an emergency fund worth six months of living expenses. Unfortunate events could strike you at any time. You could get laid off, fall sick, or hate the new management to give you some time to recover and find the next best job for you. Ensure you build an emergency fund that covers your monthly expenses for at least six months. With it, you'll be able to wait for the right opportunity without stressing, instead of jumping on the next job that comes along because you're running low on cash. Avoid debt like the plague. Credit card and loan companies are out there to make money not to make your dreams come true. If you have them, use your credit cards in the smart way. Always pay the full amount each month so you don't incur interest. Paying interest eats up your nest egg in the long run. You just don't realize it in the moment. Here is a debt payment guide from the book The Simple Path to Wealth by JL Collins. If your debt interest rate is less than 3%, pay it off slowly and route the money towards your investments instead. Between 3 to 5%, do what feels most comfortable. Either put the money to debt payment or investments. More than 5%, pay it off ASAP. Do not inflate your lifestyle. When you get a pay raise, when your passive income starts to accumulate, continue to live as if these events never happened. Instead, you want to use the extra cash to buy your time back. And you'll do that by saving it and investing it. It's very common and very human to be tempted to use that extra cash to upgrade your car, house, laptop, gaming console, wardrobe, you name it. What you might not realize is that a couple of days after your purchase, hedonic adaptation is going to kick in and that feeling of euphoria you got from buying the shiny new thing, it will go away. This item you were once excited about is now just a common item in your inflated lifestyle. Why you feel like upgrading your lifestyle is usually for status signaling. Don't do it though. If you're tempted, remember the paradox of the man in the Ferrari. You believe that if you were the man in the Ferrari, people would notice and admire you. But you do this while ignoring the man in the Ferrari. You don't need the new pricey car, handbag or clothes. Do not buy things you don't really need to impress people you don't really like. Spending is public, but saving is private. Don't keep up with the Joneses. Their flashy and extravagant lifestyle might be funded by credit cards, keeping them in a vicious debt cycle. Live a minimalist lifestyle instead. You require less than you think to live a comfortable life. Being able to buy your time back by having a nest egg 
and cash reserve is better than having a collection of material things that display your status. Any extra cash you make should be used to grow your nest egg in private. Learn how to invest the right way. Investing is a powerful tool if done right. You can leverage it to create your passive income engine and it will provide you with pockets of income in the form of dividend in the long run without you having to do any extra work. Not only that, with time, the nest egg you've invested in will grow exponentially with the power of compounding. So how to get it right? The main advice from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger for the lay investor, which is the most of us by the way, is to invest in a low-cost index fund that tracks the S&P 500, like Vanguard. Examples would be VTSAX or VTS. With, with, under the conditions you name, I'd, I'd probably have it all in a very low-cost index fund. And it'd probably be, you know, might be Vanguard. Uh, somebody I knew was reliable, somebody where the cost was low. And because you postulated that you're not going to become a professional investor, I would recognize the fact that I'm an amateur investor. Remember the rules of investing from Warren Buffett. First rule of investing, do not lose money. Second rule of investing, never forget rule number one. So, never invest in assets you do not understand. Break the cap on your monthly salary by creating your own side hustle. By working for someone else, you will always have a capped salary. No matter how big the salary is, no matter how much extra effort you put in your nine to five, your salary will be capped to what the business agreed on when they brought you on board. Best case scenario, you get the common 3% raise year on year. How do you fight this? Figure out how to generate extra income on your own by creating your very own side hustle. That is income that's not tied to your nine to five. It will be your gateway to quitting your current nine to five. Creating your own business breaks the cap on how much you can get paid. You only capped by the amount of skills you have to get your business to generate money for you. The extra income you make from your side hustle at the start should go back into improving your side hustle so you can increase your revenue. For example, by helping you to implement systems or outsource some of the work that you do to free up your time. And that free time will allow you to focus on scaling your business. The extra income from your side hustle could also be reinvested into your passive income engine to accelerate your way to financial freedom. How to assess when to quit your 9 to 5? Even after years of implementing the steps we just went through, quitting your 9 to 5 might be a scary step depending on how well your side hustle and passive income engine are going. When you're ready and you've made sure you've protected your downside with all the previous steps, it will be time for you to quit the 9 to 5 and put your freed up time into supercharging your side hustle, which has now become your main business. Here are a set of questions from the book Take the Risk by Ben Carson that might guide you with the decision. Ask yourself, what is the best thing that can happen if I do this? Then, what is the worst thing that can happen if I do this? Then ask, what is the best thing that can happen if I don't do this? And finally, what is the worst thing that can happen if I don't do this? If you've loved this video, you will love this one up here which is about learning how to sell digital products in seven easy steps. Thanks for watching. And until next time, my friend, take care.